Tanse, Nitsigasan Mo Clark, and I am a Metis performer, artist, multidisciplinary artist, primarily based in music and spoken word. And I'm also an educator and teacher, so I work a lot in community. I got into teaching kind of by chance, uh, but I think it's really quite a natural entryway as an artist. Uh, we're constantly in the process of learning about ourselves and inquiring into kind of who we are, what is the place where we live, what are the things we've learned and how can we use that to sort of grow and to strengthen our voices. And I really feel that teaching is about reciprocity and it's about learning about one another and learning how we connect with one another and how through those connections we can kind of re-establish a stronger connection with ourselves. to teach with another artist or musician to also give youth like more than one sort of like launching point and if I can't teach with another artist I like to include uh, the writings, the music, the stories of other indigenous people as Leanne Simpson speaks about you know we need to kind of reframe ourselves with a grounded normativity as to who we are and how we are living and experiencing the world from a place of like rehumanizing and recentralizing indigenous ways of being and of understanding and of being in the world as like the central access point. So what I like to do is sort of decolonize literature and poetry and bring in Quay, like bring in women and bring in two-spirit authors and activate through conversation and through body language and sometimes through just sound making. Um, and so sometimes that happens through technology, like I use a looping pedal and we use the looping pedal as part of the talking circle and the microphone becomes the talking stick and it becomes the tool to help express and expose itself in different ways. And I feel like we've been so conditioned that you need to be literate and you need to know how to spell and you need to be able to write. And I do feel that writing is incredibly important and it's part of my practice. Yet, a lot of the youth I work with don't have really good literacy and writing skills. So what are ways that I can help them and they can help themselves um, acknowledge their power as storytellers and as story keepers. So that's in community and, and I love working with emerging artists who are sort of also finding their voices and figuring out how to become professional and what does that mean and how do they fit into an often fast-paced and really demanding industry. So I think it's really great to also figure out how as Indigenous people we can build community and we can build kinship circles um, within the music world, uh, within the writing world, and as like artistic process, but also as creative kinship. And when it comes to a collaborative perspective, it's, it's similar where I work with elders and I work with youth, but then I also work with my peers and it's sort of questioning how are we making relationships to the stories that we've been told and to the stories we want to tell and how are we telling them together? Um, musically, rhythmically, uh, lyrically, spiritually, what are those connections? And build a relationship with your creation and yourself as a creator first and foremost and from that place, you know, the world will receive you 